Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. On today's show, we'll have the Saskatoon Star Phoenix and Regina Leader Post Editor-in-Chief Russell Wangerski joining us, as well as 95-year-old Frank Atchison, who's just completed his walk to Regina. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Follow us on Facebook to watch new and past interviews or email us at connectyxe at gmail.com. The Star Phoenix and the Leader Post are two long-standing traditions in Saskatchewan. We have uh, new editor-in-chief, Russell Wangerski, uh, pressed to the max with some meetings today, but took some time out to join us. Uh, Russell, thanks for doing that, and uh, welcome to Saskatchewan. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I want to find out a little bit about uh, your role, but uh, more importantly, uh, who is Russell and, and how did he come to be in, in Saskatoon and uh, looking after Regina and Saskatoon's major newspapers? Well, I've been a journalist and writer, um, gosh, almost 35 years now. Uh, I've worked in Ontario. I've been a regional columnist for newspapers in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland. I was a managing editor of the Telegram, which is a provincial daily in St. John's that has the same sort of pedigree as the Leader Post and the Star Phoenix. I think it's 132 years of publication now. Um, So I've been at newspapers since presses were really big and press runs were huge. And uh, I just, uh, I I reached a point where I was writing columns and editorials uh, for a chain called Saltwire in the Atlantic provinces, which owns 32, I think, daily and weekly papers out there. Um, but it was, a, it was a lot of writing day after day, at about 10 pieces a week, four columns, six editorials. And uh, the opportunity came up here uh, to apply to be the editor-in-chief. And I knew the editor-in-chief who had been here before, Heather Pearson, who is just, uh, you know, we had worked together in, in the post media chain years ago. And uh, I knew her, knew her work, and I thought, wow, she must have a great couple of teams working with her, and it would be really fun to get back onto the sharp edge of the newspaper business and out of what I sort of call the Senate in the news world, where you sit in in front of your computer and uh, write uh, thorough, deep thoughts, but don't end up actually making decisions that actually change things in coverage or what's what you're looking at or how you want the direction of a paper to be set. That's a wealth of experience that you're bringing uh, to our province. And one of the things that I guess we were looking uh, with some of the columns that you've written is some of the distinct differences in where you've lived and what you're seeing in Saskatchewan. Uh, and one of them was the uh, the article about the, the back alleys and so on. And can you share with us some other observances that you've seen uh, just with your move out here compared to your home in Atlantic Canada? Uh, well, the biggest one is you have this giant glowing ball in the sky that appears like almost every day. It's not something you see once a week. Um, St. John's two years ago had uh, July that had 12 hours of sunshine for the entire month. Um, so I, I'm quite enjoying that, uh, along with the fact that, I mean, things spring out of the ground when you plant them. There, there are, but there are a remarkable number of differences and there are a remarkable number of similarities. I mean, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians like to kind of pride themselves on being um, extremely friendly and supportive people. But one of the things that you notice really quickly is, is how friendly and supportive people are in Saskatchewan and in Saskatoon particularly, because that's where I've been so far trying to find my feet and, and uh, in the midst of a pandemic. What are you noticing just in the, uh, I guess, the newsprint and newspaper industry? Uh, we look at Eastern Canada and, and Western Canada, Central Canada. Uh, are there trends that are commonplace across the country or are you seeing some differences here in the prairies as opposed to Atlantic Canada? In, well, there, in terms there, of- there's some real big differences and there's some real big similarities. I mean, one of the biggest similarities is that the newspaper business, you know, has been, has been shrinking over the years as your possible sources of news broaden. Uh, there are so many places to get news now. Um, 
the digital world is so huge and our digital world at, at Star Phoenix and the Leader Post are, are a huge part of our business as well. So the, there is that across North America. One of the things I've noticed, particularly in Saskatchewan, though, is, uh, and, and, and it's sort of a strange thing because this isn't actually, it's part of the newspaper business, but it's not actually part of the sort of news and editorial side, is both um, edit, um, obituaries, which here are astounding. I mean, they are fantastic stories of people's lives. They're told with humor. They're told with grace. Um, it's not just simply a listing of who's related to who, how many you know family members are left to mourn. No, it's a capture of the, the people themselves. And the other thing is, is letters to the editor. I'm finding that the letters to the editor here uh, tend to be succinct, on point, written by people who know issues inside out um and and it is it's a really refreshing world to see people so involved in civic and provincial politics and civic and provincial issues and when we look at, at the ownership of the vagina leader post saskatoon star phoenix and and uh post media uh, across the country is there more of a consolidation and sharing of resources or, or reporters. Uh, I'm finding it a little bit taxed to the max with uh, time constraints and uh, not being able to be a true journalist like they used to be. Uh, are, are there trends that you mentioned there's so many places to source your news from? Uh, are there things that can set you apart in the newsprint world? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that you find right away is um, the ability to do detailed stories, to do deeper, more involved stories, to look at an issue. I mean, I've worked in, I've worked in uh, print. I've worked in radio to a small way. I've worked in the digital world. I've also worked in television. I did five years at uh, CBC in St. John's. And one of the things you notice is that um, you have more space, both digitally and in print, to expand on an issue, to look at it. And the other thing is, is, is writing. Just the, the ability to use language and to not have to sort of sum everything up in a minute and a half, but to use language in an artful way, in a descriptive way, to capture the sense of what's happening in a place rather than just simply what's happening. You know, the place is part of it. The people are part of it. How they look, what they see, what their world looks like, what's inside their fence, what's outside their fence. All of that is fodder that works really, really well in print and in, in essentially digital print, which is, you know, written word, but on your computer instead of on, on newsprint. Right. And, and will that uh, movement, I guess, you have the capacity to also, with the digital world, uh, add that component of some video uh, while your reporters are there and, and have that in links uh, with your online reporting as well. Is, is that going to become more prevalent and, and a bit of cross-phasing with uh, print and digital video type uh, presentations from uh, your industry, I guess? You're likely to see more of it, but one of the things about it is... is um... It is its own skill set. I mean, one of the things we used to say in, in television is you can take a, a, a cameraman, a shooter, and make them into a, a video journalist because they will come back with the pictures and you can help them with the story. But it's much harder to take an on-camera personality and turn them into a video journalist, both shooting and cutting their own video because first they have to have the pictures and they have to have the eye to capture those pictures. So, you know, there's a, there, there is a learning curve um, involved. But one other thing, one other huge advantage of the digital world that we never had in print before that hasn't a appeared in broadcast is you can now link to the original documents you're working for. If you're working from SGI's annual report, you can link digitally to SGI's report and say, hey, if you're concerned about my interpretation of this as a journalist, go and look at the raw data, go and look, you know, and there's, you know, space out there on the internet for all that material for anyone who's interested to dig into it. And, and that in some ways helps to um, solidify uh, the bona fides of journalists, because you can go back and you can say, if you don't like it, look, and if you have a problem with what I've written, point it out to me, show me where I went wrong. 
and, uh, and, and I think that helps everybody. I think that helps the interested reader. I think it helps the journalist stay on track and be fair. Um, and I, you know, I, I just think it, it, it provides so much more advantage to get as much information out as possible. It's like having, you know, it, it's like you, you have uh, uh, a newspaper that also has a library in the pages. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, just a, it's just a true benefit. And do you see, I'm a, a newsprint, have to have a, a hard copy in front of me kind of person. And I think that's maybe just what I grew up with going to libraries and so on. But uh, do you see us eventually phasing out of physical newsprint uh, newspapers? Eventually, I, I, I think it, the possibility is there. Um, the question is, when does that happen? I mean, if you go if, if you go to a university and ask how many of you have a print subscription to a newspaper, well, you know, I didn't have a print subscription to a newspaper when I was in university. But my first year out of university, I got I was picking up three papers a day and reading them. Um, I don't think you'll find that happening now. So the, what ends up happening is, you know, you, you have a, a group of people who, who want the physical product, but the group gets smaller and there's not a new, uh, there's not new reasons to come into it. Any, it, you know, if, if your sole business was landline telephones, you would be having a hard time right now as, you know, I'm, I'm an old timer, but I don't have a physical telephone in my house. My phone's in my pocket now. And, you know, there is a risk that newspapers will go that way. But what I hope happens is that we get to transition into a digital world where we're still uh, a respected and uh, believed product uh, in a way that an instantaneous website popping up somewhere and saying, and now we're going to give you your news and it'll all be true, uh, doesn't have that same, same weight. I think it's a, a remarkable transition that uh, we're going through and, and still have yet to emerge uh, on the cutting edge. And I want to thank you for taking time and uh, shedding some light on that. It's, uh, it's a great experience. You've got a good product and good people to work with. Uh, they're, great. And they're great people. Welcome to Saskatchewan, and I'm sure we'll talk again. Anytime. Thank you very much. Stay with us, folks. We're coming right back. <laughs>